The turbulence model, it is like the mother of all empirical relationships that we use to represent turbulence in a CFD uh, tool. And it kind of modifies our basic understanding. You know, we know the fundamental equations for momentum, uh, conservation of mass, uh, conservation of energy and conservation of, you know, species when they track, but we don't really include unless you have a lot of detail and you run them transient, they don't really include turbulence in them. So we need to try to include the impact of turbulence on the those equations in some way. And that really comes through with this effective viscosity, which is basically kind of mixes things up. That is the way we represent the turbulence for these quantities. And this term right here is kind of used in all of those equations to represent turbulence. And this term right here, the empirical relationship, you know, like how do you come up with what the turbulence, how it impacts these equations? What is that? And so, well, how do we quantify that? And Typically, most two equation turbulence models, they choose two fundamental relationships. One of them is the turbulent kinetic energy, which is this K squared term here. And that is basically like the old local eddies, you know, the tumbling flow that's not resolved within your grid. That is what we're trying to quantify. And we're saying, okay, we can't really quantify it. We want to represent it. What kind of thing do we want to use in this empirical relationship? to kind of capture that turbulent energy and its turbulent kinetic energy is the yardstick or the reference point that we use. And we kind of track that turbulent kinetic energy. Well, and so we can look at the turbulent kinetic energy and then we have one other value right here, which is the epsilon, which is kind of the, the dissipation rate. How quickly does that turbulent kinetic energy die? And I mean, it's always dying at some point. But how quickly is it and how do we quantify that process as well? Because we can't have one quantity that just marks the generation of it. We also have to have another quantity that kind of takes it away and makes it go disappear. And, and the kind of the ratio of these two here help quantify the local turbulence levels there. And that's what our turbulence model gives us. It, we have two equations, the turbulent kinetic energy, which kind of quantifies the turbulent kinetic energy and their epsilon, you can see that, you know, the amount of turbulence, it scales to the square of the turbulent kinetic energy, meaning like when you have a lot of kinetic energy, you're going to expect the diffusivity of that energy to affect our uh, primary variables in a big way. Uh, and if the dissipation rate is small, then we would also expect that the turbulent kinetic energy in this value to get very large. And then kind of the opposite is, is there, is what you would expect if, if the kinetic energy gets smaller, the dissipation rate gets larger, um, the trends would kind of go in the direction you would expect. And this is the, basically the fundamental turbulent relationship that we use to kind of characterize turbulence in our model. And the, and the standard K-epsilon turbulence model is, you know, it's a simple model for sure. It's been around for years and years, and it, but it works quite well. And when one of the aspects of the fact that it works quite well is because it is so simple um, in some respects. And if we just look at the turbulent kinetic energy equation here, and we look at each term starting on the left, we have basically your transient term says, you know, the turbulent kinetic energy changes with time if we run a transient simulation. We have our convective term that says, you know, the turbulent kinetic energy, it as your flow moves from one location to another, the turbulent kinetic energy travels with it. Okay, that kind of makes sense. And then you have the diffusion of the turbulent kinetic energy, which is this other term right here, which says, well, it's the turbulent kinetic energy in one location, it kind of affects its neighbor kind of like thermal conductivity. If you have a high temperature and a low temperature, you would expect the high temperatures to influence the low temperatures or vice versa. And that's what this term does. But you'll notice here that it has this effective, this turbulent viscosity value in here, but it also has kind of a tuning constant. Here's another empirical parameter that we put in this model. It has this constant that we put in there. And those are kind of buried in Azor. They're in one of the input files, but it's not really accessible 
because nobody really, not many people change them. If you want to, you can go into the files and change them. So, so this kind of character, all these differential equations right up to this point kind of characterizes the transport of turbulent kinetic energy throughout the domain, everywhere. Uh, but then we have this term right here is our turbulent production rate. So this is the generation of turbulence. And if we look down here, the turbulent production rate, really it is kind of functionally dependent on the velocity gradients. Uh, and this is a very important fact that I'd like to kind of discuss is this gradient right here for the velocity is important. And especially in a CFD simulation, how that gradient is calculated can affect this turbulent production and ultimately the turbulent kinetic energy in your domain. So if you have an algorithm that uses, and it has very smooth calculations of gradients and, and they're very smooth and, and, and like they result in very good numerical behavior, then you're gonna get very uh, a low value in gradient right here. And the turbulent production term is going to be smaller. Uh, if you have an implementation of how the gradient is calculated right here, that perhaps tries to capture uh, local gradients very sharply and captures those gradients very well, you're gonna tend to get higher values for these gradients right here, which in turn is going to have an impact on the turbulent production rate that is generated by that turbulence model, just simply by the discretion scheme that the algorithm itself uses. And that is important. And that is one of the reasons you see such a large difference, even in the implementation of a particular turbulence model uh, from one code to another, comes down to how that turbulent production rate is calculated. <clears throat> Uh, so that's an important thing that we need to consider, and that plays a big role when we start talking about these gradients and how they're used and, and why they're used when we start looking at the details of the K-omega SST turbulence model, because it uses gradients heavily. Uh, and then the last thing you have in the turbulent production rate is this dissipation rate. Um, and so this basically, this is the decrease in your turbulent kinetic energy based on your dissipation right here and it scales by the density of the fluid. <clears throat> so that kind of kind of sets the stage for our turbulent kinetic energy. That's one of the yardsticks that we're going to use for characterizing turbulence in our model. So the next thing is the turbulent kinetic energy or the dissipation right here. And here you can see this one doesn't have as much of a physical uh, relationship in my mind. It's mostly a length scale thing and we kind of know that from the boundary conditions that we put in. Uh, like usually the dissipation equation is characterized by a length scale, like a hydraulic diameter or a length or some way. And that really is why a length scale is kind of makes a certain amount of sense because an eddy can only get so big. And oftentimes an eddy is kind of controlled by the geometry of your system. It can't get any bigger than your system is. If your pipe is a, you know, has a hydraulic diameter of one, then you would expect that the eddy can no, get no larger than one, generally speaking. And so that's the turbulent uh, dissipation rate here. And it has um, some constants in it. It has a production rate uh, is in here as well. The turbulent production rate is part of one of those terms, uh, but it's ratios of these two right here, uh, in here that really control how this field evolves. 